you think Japan is all about the massive mega cities and everything you find there, well, you'd be wrong. Japan has some incredible backcountry and you can easily access amazing walks and multi-day hikes. But you can also do some seriously great one-day itineraries that not only take you out of the city into lovely countryside, but also throw you back in time into a Japan from the Edo period. It's like entering a 400 year old time tunnel. And the great news is, is that you can easily do this as a solo hiker too. Today, I'm going to tell you all about the Nakasendo Trail, how to get here, what to expect, and show you the sights and sounds of being in the Japanese countryside. I'm on the trail and getting ready to start a long walk from Tsumago and Magome, two old towns on the trail. It'll take a few hours in this heat with some stops along the way. Wish me luck and I'll tell you all about how you can get off the Kyoto to Tokyo tourist trail and can do this amazing solo hike in Japan too. I started the day in Tokyo and took the Shinkansen to Nagoya before changing to my final train to Nagiso Station where I took a bus to Sumago. The Nakasendo Trail, literally the central mountain route, was a mountainous inland walking route through the Kiso Valley that connected Edo, which is modern day Tokyo, with Kyoto back in the Edo period, 1603 to 1868. The trail spanned 540 kilometers or 340 miles and had 69 post towns for travelers to rest and recover. But in just this short, well-preserved section of the Nakasendo Trail, don't worry, you're not gonna be attempting the whole 540 kilometers of the old route, you could be excused for thinking you've taken a step back in time to the age of the samurai. The part of the Kiso Road we're interested in is celebrated for its unspoiled green forests, clear streams, and secluded rural villages and farms that have been largely unaffected by modern development. Nowadays, the original Nakasendo Trail is mostly lost or repurposed as modern roads. Parts of the original road in the Kiso Valley can still be seen today, with the most renowned stretch being from Megomi Juku in Gifu Prefecture to Sumago Juku in Nagano Prefecture. This little part of the trail is around 7.3 kilometers or four and a half miles long and should take you about four hours to walk at a reasonably relaxed pace. If you want a unique Japanese experience away from the usual Kyoto to Tokyo touristy stuff, hiking this trail is perfect. The lush scenery is perfect for outdoor lovers and the preserved post towns are a treat for history buffs. Imagine wooden buildings, no power lines and no cars. For a one day trip with an overnight stay, I started at Nagiso Station. It was a scorching day and I wanted to manage my liquids and effort. So I took the bus to Sumago. When you arrive in Sumago, you'll be welcomed by a huge water wheel. The town is gorgeous with its wooden buildings and peaceful streets. Be sure to drop by the Tourist Information Building for some great food recommendations and to learn more about the town and the Nakasendo Trail. Be sure to pick up a copy of one of these walking map booklets, which has a ton of useful information in it. Here's a tip if you think you can't do this walk because you have too much luggage or your luggage is just the wrong kind, perhaps a bulky wheeled suitcase that wouldn't be good to drag uphill across cobblestones and steps for eight kilometers. There's a solution here if you're planning on what to do with your luggage. I was carrying everything with me on a seven day JR pass around Japan and I really didn't want to carry my big bag on the trail. I mean, it would have been possible, but super uncomfortable. So I made sure I got to the Sumago tourist information office in the morning before 11 a.m. For just 1000 yen per item, they'll transport your luggage to the tourist information center in Magome for you to pick up there. You just need to make sure you pick it up before 5 p.m. And it works the other way around too, transporting your luggage from Magome to Sumago. I stopped for a refreshing cold sober noodles lunch in this 80s, 90s retro memorabilia themed restaurant for lunch and then had a little wander around Sumago before preparing to head out on the trail. Options include exploring the history museum, Honjin, a historical inn for government officials and Kotoku Temple. Okay, almost ready to go, so make sure you have enough fluids with you if it's a hot day and layers of clothing too if the weather changes for the worse. Also use the restrooms before you leave town. It'll be a while before you get to the next opportunity. Make sure to carry these essentials in your day pack. These should include high energy snacks, enough fluids for your entire walk, 
waterproof bag with medications and identification, collapsible walking sticks if those make things easier for you, a bag for carrying out trash, you need to carry your trash out with you, and decent rain gear. Now it's super important to have on hiking boots or good closed toe shoes to protect your feet and ankles. The cobblestones get super slippery when it's raining, so make sure your shoes have got good grip. There are a few highlights to watch out for along the way, as well as the experience of just being on the trail itself. One of the coolest things on this part of the journey is the male Odaki and woman Medaki waterfalls. They're right next to each other. Apparently Miyamoto Musashi, the Japanese swordsman, philosopher and writer, used to train here at these waterfalls in the 17th century. There's also a tea room run by a friendly chap who takes delight in chatting and interacting with travellers who come by, providing with tea and a brief rest stop along the way. And heading in the direction I was going, it was very welcome after a long uphill section in the sweltering heat. <laughs> wow, you can actually smell the cypress in the forest all around me. There are also little places to stay that you come across along the way. And it's worth taking a little explore in some of these places as it's interesting what you find because it's true, you're never that far away from a handy vending machine in Japan. And this one was very handy for an ice cold drink on such a hot day. Now there was a bit of a diversion in place where I had to walk along a road for a bit which takes you out of the 400 year old Japan experience but it wasn't too long before I headed back into the trees and the cobblestones, stairs and the sound of the crickets and the never stopping heat of Japan in August. Another thing you'll notice while walking the trail is these bells. Now this is to make yourself known so you don't surprise any bears that may be near the trail. Now it's worth being bear aware when in Japan as incidents of bear meets human have been increasing in Japan in recent years. I did what most people do and rang the bell too. In fact you may hear bells ringing occasionally when on the trail as these pop up from time to time along the road. Though listening to a local talk to a tourist they said that monkeys are more of a nuisance than bears in this part of Japan. That's what I heard anyway. When I arrived in Megomi, I happily learned that my bag was at the tourist information center that was practically next door to my accommodation because I was tired after such a hot walk. I stayed at the Mago Michaya Minshuku guest house, which is a relatively inexpensive guest house where I had a room for the night and access to shared facilities. The dinner that I arranged for the guest house was phenomenally good. Just look here at the locally sourced and reasonably priced feast they provided for me to finish my day and enjoy in all its amazingness. I was so tired after the walk that I fell straight to sleep, though it was a sultry night so I was tossing and turning a bit. But by morning I felt refreshed and with no aches and pains from the hard hot walk from the day before. It's definitely one of those 20,000 step days I had just put in, but I think the delicious and nutritious local food probably did its job of restoring me overnight for the day ahead. Now I did the trail in August 2023. Even though it was a crazy hot and humid period, the town and trail views were still amazing. But if I was doing it again, I would go from Megomi to Sumago, doing it the other way round. Because this is an average downward slope all the way rather than uphill, which is what I did. Not what you need in the middle of a very hot summer season. I know they say it's not that difficult going from Tsukabo to Megomi, but on a day like this, do it the other way around because it will downhill all the way and you really don't need the uphill as well as the heat. Stopping for some water. Now the only reason I did it from Sumago to Magome was because I found it impossible to find reasonably priced accommodation in Sumago. So be sure to book early to get the best chance of a bed for the night. If you want to hike the Nakasendo, they say the best time is spring, April and May or fall around November. 
Besides that, summers are scorching and sticky with lots of typhoons and winters need extra gear to keep from freezing. So be aware of that in your planning. Also, make sure to include dinner and breakfast with your reservations as other dining options might be a bit limited. When I arrived in Megomi, I was told I needed to eat immediately if I didn't have a reservation for dinner as everywhere was pretty much either booked out or closing soon. Fortunately, my accommodation added me to their dinner list at late notice, but make sure you get this arranged when you make your accommodation booking so you have time to relax after arriving in town. So the next morning, I woke up early and walked down the hill to catch the bus to head on my way to the train station and make my way to Takayama. But that's another day and another story. Check out this video for the next in my guides to traveling in Japan solo. I'll see you there.